be to about to my multiple iterations. It was genuine when we started this time. Easier. I'll call to order the special meeting of the Paradise <coughs> Irrigation District Board of Directors Thursday, December 3rd at 5 p.m. I ask public and board members to please silence your cell phones, put them on vibrate, and if you need to uh, take a call, please depart the facilities before you start speaking to give uh, other people an opportunity to hear everything that is being said by either public members or board members. At this time, I'd like you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. George Ann, may we have roll call, please? Vice President Heller? Here. Here. President Hess? Here. Director Fletcher? Here. Director Heller? Present. At this time, we're moving into our public participation section of the agenda. Very short agenda, but could be lengthy. Uh, in the public participation session, uh, members of the public will be given an opportunity to speak on matters that are not already on the agenda. Uh, although the board cannot take any action on in a matter that's not on the agenda. Uh, comments will be limited to five minutes per speaker. <coughs> Opportunity for public comments on agenda items will be provided at the time we're discussing that agenda item. At this time, are there any members of the public that would like to address the board about something that is not on the agenda? Yes. John Remelia. I, I just like to number one apologize for coming in the last second and number two I caught the least bit of the courtesy and the respect and the listening to other people that you just got done saying and I'd like to make a statement that that should start with the board and when a board member walks out of a meeting and leaves when another member is going to speak at the end of it because he doesn't agree with them that's courtesy, respect to the public and to that board member. And maybe we ought to look in the mirror. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? There being none, we'll move on to the next item. It is the uh, draft cost of service study, review and discussion of proposed water rate structure plan. Manager Barber, would you please lead us off into this? Item? I'll do more than lead you off. <laughs> I have a presentation that walks you through uh, uh, kind of rough, not, not step by step. The cost of service study is uh, uh, a lot of effort, a lot of time invested in it, in great detail. But I want to take the opportunity to talk about cost of service and study and how generally things were brought together. Um, so let's talk a little bit about PID. This is a chart of our annual demand. So you can see going <coughs> through the years, we've uh, started dropping in demand. Thank you for the conservation of our customers and the conservation efforts of the district. Um, but varying demands cause us to have uh, issues when we have fixed operational costs. This is what we're faced with on an annual basis. It's going back to 26. Look at the uh, variability we have in annual participation. Per precipitation. Um, that's quite a bit. And so trying to supply a community <coughs> with water with a, a supply that's very um, changing from year to year does does pose challenges. So what this rate structure is trying to achieve is provide some flexibility to the customer for their conservation efforts or their need based on having the, the yard they like to have, but maintain a fixed, uh, more stable revenue stream for the district. I want to go back in history. 
history a little bit. Go back to 1916-1917 when the district was formed. The uh, shortly after, the people of Paradise Irrigation District were asked to to pass a bond to build the Getty Dam and the pipes and and uh, delivery system to the ridge. The estimated cost of those was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in nineteen sixty. The assessed value of all the lands in the district was $348,000. So at that time, the water was that important to this community, they were willing to pass a bond that had the same value of all of their properties put together. That'd be about $650 million today. I bring, bring this up for perspective of, of the value of water and, and maybe the declining value of water in some people's mind, but I want to remind people of the way it was. And in fact, in the 50s, when Paradise Dam was built, this was replicated again. So there's a one and a half million dollar bond pass to build Paradise Dam. It was essentially the same as the value of all the lands in the ID territory. And that bond passed overwhelmingly in 1960. We've tried to uh, gain money into the district as much as we can to help reduce the cost to our customers. So after, over the last several years, we brought in over $4 million of grants. And what that means, that's $4 million we didn't have to receive through rates. So we're doing our part. Um, many folks are <coughs> looking at the facilities we're in today, um, as opposed to where we were four or five years ago today. Um, that was a need. That all came from a workshop with the board of directors uh, that's, that morphed into a strategic business plan for this district. They gave me marching orders of what we need to do. So we ended up, number one, one of the top priorities was the old grove yard needed to be replaced. And that's a picture of it. Very old, old apple shed actually. Uh, not a very safe environment and not a positive working environment. But at the end of the day, we were able to transition to this facility, along with our new corporation yard, at a district cost of around two and a half million dollars, which is a lot of money, I understand that, but it's a very good deal in the public facilities. This is a chart that shows why we're here today, why we're having this discussion. In 2009 and 10, we had a pretty good um, set of cash. Restricted cash, that is cash the board, the district has no control over. Those reserves we have to put aside for certain purposes. The, uh, the red is the cash that we have for reserves, emergencies, etc. So you can see that red was up and growing. We had a rate change in 2011 that lasted three years. That rate change uh, was approved at a lesser rate than what the committee um, recommended. And so everyone was on board with that, we understood. But the impact is that those cash reserves, our bank account continues to grow. And in the last couple of years, we've had no rate change, and that's, that's kind of continued as well. Um, we've also had some things that were put on us by the state of California. We've, uh, we had a requirement for conservation uh, at a higher level than we, we would have done under our own plans. So that cost us quite a bit of revenue that um, we don't have today. We also have a process water recycle project that is in the um, in process and in the design phase. So we've been spending money on the, for the engineers right now to put that design together, that's costing us money, and ultimately it will cost us quite a bit to build that solution, and that's to meet state water quality requirements. Here's our projected expenses, this comes out of the budget. This is the basis for the rate design. Um, so if you had a chance to read the study, this is where it all starts. So 2016, of $8.2 million, you'll see that this is where it starts getting really big in year three. That's when the debt 
service for the process water recycle project kicks in. Um, I'll make sure I want to point out these three years are straight out of the budget. These two years are estimates of just a 3% increase in cost of living adjustment. So that's where this whole process of designing rates started. This is our revenues. We need to meet these expenditures. There is options. This number could go down. How could it go down? It could go down with pretty much employee cuts. Um, we don't have a, a chance to redo debt. We don't have a chance to default on debt. Uh, we have responsibilities. So really the only way to make that go down is through staff reductions. Um, so this board has to decide at some point is, is this the level of service we want to provide our public? I think it's pretty good right now. We are a service company more than a water company. That's what I try and instill in our employees. That's what I try to tell our board. That's what we're doing. Service is our key. That's what we're here for. So if you reduce that number by reducing staff, then you're reducing service. So if you want to call up on the phone with your lead, or a problem with your water service and be told that next Thursday we have a spot between 8 and noon will come out. Um, that's what you get from other utilities. That's not what you get from us. But if you want to reduce that number, that's one way to do it. That's that. The other big change here is allotments. <coughs> what we're trying to do is provide people with a basic level of water service that's included in their service charge. That helps us have a more even revenue stream as we go forward, but it still gives an opportunity for the public to be rewarded for conservation or uh, have the ability to purchase more water when they need to. So this was calculated through the May and July average, so that's May and July bills which means April through June usage. We average those out for the different kind of buckets of people we've seen out there in 2014. Um, these are basically blocks of 20% of our residential customers. And that's where these allotments came from. And then we established a tier one that was from that amount to double the allotment. And then above that was a tier two. <coughs> the other key component in, in setting this up and in devising this rate structure is equivalent meters. We have lots of residences, 90% of our customers are residential, but we have some people with big meters out there, agriculture, businesses. And so what this exercise and calculation does is it puts, sorry it's a little dark, <laughs> it puts everybody on the same playing field. So if you have a three inch meter, it actually has 10 times the capacity of a residential meter. So you are going to get, you're going to count that 10 times what you would for residential to determine how many equivalent meters you have. And if we took the absolute most simplest calculation to determine what our rate should be, it would be $60.72 for equivalent meter in 2016. That's what it takes to, to gain the revenue we need for that chart we saw earlier. This is the service charge component. This is kind of how it's broken up. There's lots of details on the service rate plan. But there's two components that come up with the service charge. The first one, the middle one, this is what I'm proposing for the board to adopt, is the 10K plan. That is what everything is based on. That's what every, everybody would be on on a level playing field is $54.31. Now the problem we have is we have people that have a high need for water and we have people with a low need or even a lower income that $54.31 is difficult to come up with. So this study provides 
provides an opportunity for people with a lower need to be able to reduce their service charge by saying, I'm going to agree going forward to use less, less than the 13 units that you're adopting. And by doing that, they're going to reduce their bill and consequently, these people that say, I have a higher need for water, I'm willing to take up their slack because I have a higher need and they're going to cover that cost. So what happens here is we figured out a formula to reduce these people, half of the beings can be fixed at half that amount. It's not totally random. If you look at our usage, about half our usage is in Miller and half is up there. So we fix half of it to kind of keep everybody on the same playing field. And then we adjust it in a lot of proportion based on those four and eight units we're providing. And then on the flip side, we've got these folks here in the 16K plan would be picking up the reduction in cost of the 6K folks. And the 30K plan are offsetting, picking up the offset of those in 3K. So that's how we develop these optional plans. Now keep in mind, as, as I went through this process, there's a lot of legal ramifications with setting rates. And I've had multiple conversations with our legal counsel. This is a very difficult process. So the most simplest way to make it as legal as possible is you just do this way. But I understand we have different needs in our community. So I'm trying to give some options out there so that folks can actually find a water service that meets their budget. The quantity charge We've got two tiers now instead of three. And everything has to be calculated and linked to be legal. It has to have some kind of basis. Um, tiered usage is allowed. The recent course case didn't say you couldn't have tiered rates. It said you can't have arbitrary tiered rates. You can't have tiered rates just to encourage conservation. They have to have a basis for them. So in our first tier, what we did is from that $8.2 million, we carved out the pipeline and the conservation. <coughs> because if everybody, what we're trying to do is, is put that tier one where people benefit. So if people use less water, then they don't benefit as much from pipeline replacement or conservation. Because if everybody used a little tiny bit of water, we could afford to let water leak. And we certainly wouldn't need to spend any money trying to promote conservation. So that's how we broke this first year up. So what I did is I went in in 2014, and I put everybody on the 10K plan. And I looked at all their usage in 2014, and I figured out how many would fall in tier one. How many of those units we sold in 2014 would be tier one units? And that's where that number comes from. So we take this budgeted amount, the pipeline conservation budget, divide it by those number of units, and it comes up with a dollar thirty-five. That's how tier one is calculated. Tier two is calculated on a cost of one and a half million dollars. So looks pretty random. Um, if you read the study, you'll find that we have lots of potential ways of gaining more water supply. And when you start getting tier two, you're telling the district, I'm using water to a level that may cause you to have to increase your water supply. <coughs> um, but after working it through with legal, you know, we came up with 22, 23 million dollars worth of projects that, that could become a, as a result of people using a lot of water. But we want to be reasonable to some extent, as much as we can. So what we did is, what would we do first? If everyone started using more water, using more, what's the first thing we do first? Well, the, the fastest, most easiest thing to implement is really quick would be pipeline replacement. It's hard to build a dam, it's hard to build a bladder dam, it's hard to drill a new well, those all take time. So I picked the one that would, would be the fastest, the quickest response to that need, and that would be going out contractors and having them construct two miles of pipeline and, and replace leaky pipe. 
So that's where that dollar figure came from. Same calculation from 2014. I looked at everybody in 2014 doing <coughs> this new allotment plan and figured out how many units would we have sold in 2014 if uh, under this new plan everyone was on the 10K. And that's where that 405,000 units come from. So you do the math and you end up with the cost of $3.70 a unit. What's a unit? A unit is a unit of lots. Okay. Um, what's a unit? A unit of water is our current unit of water, which is 100 cubic feet or 748 gallons. I should have put that on here. I asked for it. <laughs> I forgot that because I was building here today. Do you want to explain how you came to the 13 units as the base base uh, safety This truck here? The 13 units. Oh yeah, another thing in this flag is is this uh, 13 units in this usage pattern. And it goes back to our, our, our safety yield. You know, we can only supply so much water every year and know that we can. And if you look in the plan, we've kind of got an estimated number of percentages that, that kind of figure out what our comfort level is for delivering a certain amount of water. So what happens is 2014 was about 5,400 acre feet delivered to our customers. Um, so we looked at a 5,500 acre um, safety yield and that's what generated these numbers where we got the allotments. Explain the plan, plan names. Oh yeah, plan names. <laughs> and I've heard it a couple times, I need to make it more clear in the document. We went all around the <coughs> world trying to figure out what to call these optional plans. <laughs> Kicked around all kinds of things. Uh, started with Super Saver and Saver, then we just <coughs> kind of those people that have a nine high need, because they're not wasters, they just have a bigger yard. Um, so 3K is, comes from four units of water is about 3,000 gallons, if you round it to the year's thousand. Eight units of water is 6,000, K is thousand. Roman <coughs> no, not in the Roman. Not Roman. Some so others, it's some in, other. it's computer language. <coughs> so that's, okay. that's how we came up with that 3K, 6K, 16K, 30K. About what your lot is in gallons. So here's where we at. These, these are where we ended up with the rates. This is our proposed rate right here in the middle. It's a $54.31 monthly service charge. You get 13 units of water with that. So zero to 13 units of usage, you're gonna pay 54.31 plus the dollar hydrant charge. It's not, we're just collecting on behalf of the town. And then your tiered rates, if you use over 13, one other change now, right now when you see your bill, it's always 13, 14, 15 units. When this new plan goes in place, we're going to build to the hundredth of a unit. So about seven and a half gallons, I think that is. I do my math correctly. Um, so what happens here is when you hit 13.01, you'll get a bill for 54.31, and then 0.01 times $1.35. And as you use more water to kick into tier two, you hit 26.01, you get bill for 0.01. 370 plus 13 units at dollar 35. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the rate. Okay, <coughs> I've been back and forth with what we can handle with customer service, talking to legal. Um, there was there was some proposals to look at 2014 usage and put people in the plan that best fit them. This is a little spin on committee too because I've been back to legal after the committee and what we're proposing to do is we're going to place everybody on the adopted plan. We don't want to confuse the public that these other plans are not optional. We don't want a judge to think they're not <coughs> optional. So we will have everybody placed on the 10k plan and through our CR efforts We'll reach out to the public to let them know how to change to a different plan. It'll take effort on our part. I talk to customer service staff. We're ready to gear up for that. It'll only be a, a really big deal in the first six months of this, probably. But um, that's how it's going to go down. That's how we're proposing it. Everybody ends up on the 10K plan. Um, 
George, those users of Aquahawk, will they be able to go on to the website and select the plan if they want to change it themselves? Well, when we actually get to it, we'll have a website option, whether they're Aquahawk or not, we'll have a website option. We are working on a, an ID code on the bill so that customers can call in and just put the phone call if they have their address, their account number, and their ID number that's only will be found on their bill. We'll be able to change their plan because we know it's truly them. Um, we'll have paper options for it as well. So we'll, we'll come up with as many ways to make it as, as easy as possible for the customer. So that legal said we couldn't do what we planned, <coughs> where we would put them at what they used to use? Legal didn't say we couldn't. But they said it would be better not to. What it comes down to. They like my idea. Cases, <laughs> it comes down to what judge do you get if you get that. So what we did want to be is in a position where we put people in a plan and then we end up, they end up saying, well, I, I didn't have a choice. They put me in that plan and they know everything about what I use for water. So well, how would I know what a better plan is? Yeah, but I thought we were going to let people change. We are going to let people change. If we'll you pick one plan, okay. We'll cover that later. That's why I don't understand going into the 10K. Okay. It's just a little... Okay. Sounds like more work for staff. It is for a while, yeah. <coughs> so we've got the customer choice water rate plan. So when they when they get their chance to change, like I said, customers will be placed in the 10K. They can't choose the wrong plan. You know, this isn't pick your plan and you're stuck with it. So any time of the year a customer wants to change, and we have to do this because these are options. Anybody, um, they can change any time of the year. So they can stay in the 10K and wait until November and figure out what they used over the summer. And there'll be a process where they can contact the district and say, Did I pick the right plan? And we'll say, Well, maybe you could have, your overall bill so far to this point in the year would have been cheaper if you were on the other plan. Then we'll give you a bill credit and then you switch. So we're not trying to trick customers, we're not trying to dupe anybody, but we really want it to be a choice. Uh, yeah. What would it be bill credit? So we give them a bill credit. They credit on their bill, so their next bill, you subtract, whatever. You won't get a refund. But in other words, if somebody had what, the 54, the 10K plan, yeah. and then they moved down, yeah. they would have credit against their account. Yes. Retroactive, how far back? Beginning, the beginning, beginning of the year. Beginning of the year. Beginning of the year. Okay. In the, in the first year of implementation to the beginning of the new rate, which they wouldn't want to switch the other one because that would be less. Some place that I, some place I read it here where they could change it any time they wanted to. Yes. You don't have to wait to the end of the year. No, no, they can change before. They can change. And, you know, we're going to do a huge media blitz to get them to change in February because we want them on the right plan. Sure. We're going to have a lot of folks that use very little water that should go straight to the 3K plant. So no, they don't have to wait. They can do it any time. And if they don't change their bills, then it's going to the hell out of them. They're probably not. Will they have to do that online, phone? How will the options be? <coughs> We're going to try every option. Paper, online, phone. Mm -hmm. So they can log into the website. Yeah. Something to that effect or something with, with their bill. Okay. Business rates. <laughs> Business rates under this proposal are identical to residential. So if you have a residential meter or a residential size meter for your business, the rates are the same as residents. <laughs> if you have a larger meter than what um, a residential meter is, then you're proportionally billed and allotted water based on that meter size. And I picked the easiest one, of course. This is a three inch meter. A three inch meter has 10 times the capacity of a residential meter. So their bill will be 10 times the monthly service charge. And they will also get 10 times the allotment. So how many three inch meters are there in the district ballpark? I don't know. I can. 5%? I actually might be able to. No, less than that. 15, 20, 30. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 22. 220. Oh, 220. 
three inch? No, no, 22. Sorry. Yeah, 22. So business is, is the same. The other thing that, that's very important for people to understand, the big change, it's a big change. Uh, one thing we have right now is we have a rate for multifamily homes and residential care facilities. And they pay half, half the monthly service charge per equivalent dwelling unit. I could not come up with any way that would satisfy everything I've read about Prop 218 that would allow us to continue that practice. It just, there was just no way to justify it. So multifamily units will have an impact because they are getting moved to the business rate. So they're in the business of having people live on their property instead of selling popcorn. Um, <coughs> they do have the ability come in and figure out, do I have the right meter size? You know, they may not have, they may have a bigger meter than they need to to serve the number of people they have. So if that's the case, then they're going to be allowed to go through a process and pay us to switch it to a different size meter. And then going forward, their service charge would be based on that small meter. Um, that's about all I can offer at this point, because you got to follow the rules best as I can, and I just could not find a way that would justify half of the service charge per year. What about fire, fire meters? Uh, fire meters, we're not proposing to change at this point. Okay. Yes. I guess okay. I can see some larger fire meters get real expensive real quick for not doing anything. Yeah, no, our fire service charges are remaining the same. We're not proposing to change. The other one, and this is a key one for board input tonight. It's irrigation and local agency. One of the things that, uh, through my research, that the districts have done is that one way to reduce a certain group of customers' rates is take your non-water rate revenue and use that to reduce the amount of other users of water. We have historically provided a lesser cost for irrigation customers. They're the founding folks of our district. They don't really need the treatment plant and all those facilities that we provide. Um, multiple reasons that we as this district have provided a break to, to irrigation. Um, I, I'm proposing an expansion of that as well. And you can see that our non-rate revenue is about $360,000 a year. And so what we did was the more, there's more details in the plan, but we gave a reduction to these folks, and that reduction from what they would pay as a normal customer is less than that $366,000. So for residential irrigation, our proposal is to put them on the highest monthly service charge per resident, which is 7311, <coughs> and get that 41 allotment, which our residential customer would at that rate. But their tier rate, tier one rate, is 35 cents. Um, so that that's our break for residential irrigation. And for those that don't know, to qualify for residential irrigation, you have to have two acres of, of two acres in production for agricultural purposes. Um, what if they wanted to have a smaller allotment? Could they? Yeah. They can't. Okay. This is kind of, because the other part is, if they had the two acres, but they didn't have a residence, they'd be under the irrigation rate. This takes care of people that have a house on the property, and they're also having this area under irrigation. Um, but I'm, I'm proposing to also blend in, and, and this is where I get more direction, uh, outdoor recreation, but mostly local agencies. So you got your parks district, town of paradise, school district, um, cemetery district, all of those folks. Uh, what I'm proposing and, and I need your direction on is including them in this reduced rate as well. So they get about a dollar off of their tier one rate. There is no tier two rate for them. No matter what size meter they have. No, well, no matter what size, but when you 
do the math, they're always going to choose the smallest one. And it'll still be. They have a bigger meter. Like so if they have a three inch meter for adding, they're going to pay the 3K three inch rate. So they'll be paying 355 a month. So it's going up from what they're paying now. But they're definitely getting a break over everybody else. Uh, local agency is a different change. Um, and this is maybe a little my own philosophy that the board has to tell me they like or don't like. It's completely up to you. But when we go and charge the park district a water charge, it comes out of their tax revenue. They don't have an opportunity to do Prop 218 and increase their revenue like we do. So basically, we're taking it out of one customer, taking it from our customer that was paying in one pocket and we're putting it in another pocket. Uh, so that's my thought process why we're blending in local agencies because if their rate goes up, it's just the same customers basically that are paying for that increase. So some people would say we're double dipping. Not really, not in fact. But uh, the other part is a lot of these, especially the park district, if the town has a park, you've got recreation fields at the high schools, um, low income folks that can't afford to have a yard and a lawn, etc. They have the opportunity to recreate and play on the lawn and etc. that these places provided by these agencies. Um, one of the biggest problem problems, biggest we'll call it problem hurdles in Prop 218, <coughs> we are not allowed as a public agency to have a rate for low income people. It just doesn't fit the Prop 218 law. There's some efforts to change that coming forward, but we can't have a low income rate. That's part of the reason why I'm trying to give these option plans, etc., to give those people an opportunity to have a lesser rate. Um, value. This is my, <laughs> my commercial. If you want to say, our if you're on a 10K plan and up to 13 units of water, that's less than a half cent a gallon. So some of these are a little outdated, but think about it. Can you live without wine? Some of us can, some of us can. Can you live without coffee? No. You can't live without water. And utilities. I'm trying to look at everyone and what they pay on a monthly basis. If they pay $54 for water, how does that relate to other utilities? Well, it's pretty hard to get a cell phone data plan that's less than $50. And a whole lot of people have cable TV at $45. So I don't think that $54 for water is exorbitant. That's my commercial. So more direction. What we need tonight, I need some direction on whether you want a three or five year rate proposal. Remember, years four and five were based on a cost of living estimate of 3%. The reality is, when, and we've signed it to CPIW June of each year, and so if that were to stay in place prior to those years, we'd come to the board with that change and you would bless or not bless the, the real change in rates. Uh, so that's an option for the board. I, I, there's no reason to go through the process for less than three years because keep in mind we're trying to obtain a loan to process water recycle project. That payment hits year three. And we have to demonstrate to them that we have the ability to pay the loan. So we need to have a rate structure in place that collects the revenue and will pay that debt service when, when that project would be complete. But reserving strategy. I need to put on that. I'm going to go back a ways. This is back to the basis of this whole rate structure. What is in here? is 
$600,000 of emergency reserve. This keeps this district from giving them the position it is right now. We're trying to build a $3 million reserve over the next five years so that we can operate in an emergency or we can take care of things that come um, out of left field for us. Uh, because of the calculation, the revenue is still going to vary on consumption. It doesn't mean we're going to hit that 600 target every year, but we recommend you won't get Kevin and I to back down on that, that this stays in this calculation so that we can build that as we go forward. Um, it's very important, but that's ultimately a board decision. Uh, is that 600,000 a year um, to meet your comfort level or not? That's something I need to direct on. Um, and then lastly, I think, is you need to concur with the proposal and discussion of irrigation and local agency rates and providing them uh, a reduced rate for all of the reasons I explained in the report a little bit today. And then concur with the hearing date. Right now we're focused. We have to have the hearing ha can be no earlier than 45 days from the date we mail it. So as long as we mail it by Monday the 13th, the hearing date, the earliest it could be would be January 28th, which is a Thursday. So we we feel Yes, that we can make that happen. Because what happens is if we fall into February before you have your hearing, well, we can't impose a rate in the middle of the month that people have already consumed on. So then it kicks it out a month. If we fall and put that hearing date into February, then the consumption starts in March and the first billing and the new rates happens in April. So I need or to tell me that they um, are good with that 28th hearing date. Or we can do the 29th, which is Friday, and give us an extra day, just for safety. Um, so those are, those are some of the things that I need from the board. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the committee, we talked about the irrigation accounts and the local community, the, the local government accounts. Um, but I had suggested and, and I thought we were going to go forth and put in that tier two rate in order to have that stop gap. We're into a drought. This is a, this is what's going to happen if you if you don't exceed your allocation or we were going to develop some type of a of a drought rule. Thank you. It is in the document. 7.1. We're also proposing drought rates. So what that means, what's being proposed right now, and yes, I need direction from the board on that. If we were in a drought, we make our decision after April 1st water levels and say you as a board think we need to cut 20%, like you did this year when the state said, no, you got to do 36. Um, the way this is proposed is that those people on a 10K, 16K, and 30K plan would be cut a percentage to gain us the 20% we need. And on the irrigation and local agency side, if they would be required to cut that 20%, <coughs> and if they didn't cut everything over that uh, cut, would revert back to the tier one rates that everyone else pays. So that extra dollar a unit in year one. Thank you. It's in the plan. Okay. Okay. The presentation. Thank you. So they would jump into the tier one rates after 8K. Let's take the 10K plan, 20% reduction. They would now jump into tier one instead of 10K. They would jump in at 8K. Yes. Well, no, uh, 
Well, that's the thing we wanted to stress that the 3K and the 6K would not be, be affected. Would not be affected. Yeah, because they're already they're using already the doing it. already in conservation. Right. That's I've always it's always bothered me that somebody's saving and then you want them to save more, and they're already saving all they can. Uh, okay, you bet your tear, George, that uh, we wanted all the people to start out on the 10K plan, $54, because that's our cost of doing business, apparently. Yeah, and we have to say <coughs> that. Bring up 4.2 again, if you will, PID expenses. Oh, okay. You started out with that one. Yeah, it's up here. That was a good one. There you go. Okay, going down that, the rest of it was pretty close. Debt service. Uh, I'm just going to use two figures. I'm going to use uh, 17, 18. I would assume that 18 is when the new water treatment plant is going to be online, basically. Yes. What we're the talking about doing. And, yeah, that, and that, that, that number is so clear. That's $15 million over how many years? That 5% interest. Okay, so what we'll be doing uh, on that one, that's, no, that's the new estimated debt service of right one million two hundred three thousand dollars and so we'll be paying one million two hundred and three thousand dollars for 20 years for, oh. that's what our estimate is I mean, that's what yeah, yeah. well that's five percent that, that, that's what we would that's what kevin thinks would be likely yeah. if we had to go to the private market because we have no guarantees that we're going to get the state money. i understand on that and then the one above that is the current debt services of one million one hundred ninety nine thousand six hundred and seventy that follows across through 20 estimate here so that turns out to be and that's the existing debt that we have right the nine mil nine and a half mil or whatever it is now yes. bounces a little bit so we would we would have the 15.5 mil or 14.5 or whatever it is on the new debt service plus the old debt service until the bills are paid off or however long it is. I've got it all down in here, but one part of the group with it. So we would actually be paying yearly $2,403,000 for the next four or five years. Yeah. Debt service. Longer than that, right? Longer than that. Longer than oh that. yeah, longer than that, most likely 20 years. Yeah. And I can tell you that in 2010, we had three and a half million dollars of debt service. I know, and I will look back through that we had we had a lot, you know. In fact, the uh, McGill, uh, the Paradise Dam extension, whatever you want to call it, I remember what it was done, I watched it being done. Uh, we just basically paid that off now, or we're paying it off at 17. And that was in 77 when we borrowed that money. Did that. Something like that. Yeah, 17 is when it's going to be paid off. And, and we borrowed the money in 77, like we're talking about 18. Now, at this $54, at 31 cents and let's say everybody stays within their 13 allotment so there would be no capat no charge for the water usage over the top of that would we be able to meet all these bills here with that 54 dollars yeah if you want to meet all of the bills now that's on page 4.2 you have to have 60 dollars and 72 cents okay all of the services. How much that again? Sixty dollars. Sixty dollars and seventy-two cents. Okay, I, thought I came up with something like that too. Sixty dollars. And how much water would that give you? How much allotment of water? Thirteen. Thirteen units still. Well, that would be up to the board. He's saying <coughs> what would happen if, if nobody used more than the allotment? Nobody used more than that. Okay. I didn't know if you guys had discussed. But I think on the sixty like seventy-two. That. It would be closer instead of 13, you'd most likely get 14, 15, 16. <coughs> Unless we changed the difference. You know, yeah. but if it was, it was, it was pretty. And I picked 2014 because it was a drastic reduction from 2013, which was 7,000 yeah. acre feet. Um, so I expect a bounce back from 2015, yeah. but we're not going to go back to 2013 anytime soon. In other words, okay, what, one more quick question, because I've given this a tremendous amount of thought for the last couple of three years. Uh, at this $54.31, cents, we would be able to pay our bills, and we got within one month of not being able to pay our bills and meet salary. If you look at our budget, 
that if we continued on, we would run out of money on 6, 13, 16 again, basically. Yep. Without well, some drastic changes, yes. Yeah, okay, but if we if we go that 5431, we would be able to do our debt indebtedness, somewhat get us. Not the new debt. Not the new debt. Oh, not the new debt. Yeah, the, the new debt will go up. So this, these rates go up on a three-year basis based on that new debt. Okay. What so that fifty-four dollars will go up to sixty. Let me look up. The seventeen, eighteen. Sixty-three, eighty-four. Yeah. Well, doesn't jump. Sixty-seven, seventeen, but then flattens. Yeah. Sixty-three, eighty-four. Is that what this is? Sixty-three, eighty-four. Yeah. But it does it. But it. But it plateaus for eighteen. Okay, new debt. It's just a very small amount. Fifty cents. Yeah. Based on the CPI. <clears throat> yeah. Seventeen. There's a. There's a. Six dollar jump and then there's a fifty. I have cent, to shut your presentation. Fifty cent jump and eighteen and then yeah, it's it's well defined in here. I think there's three pages. You're, you're really not talking about a one year rate increase. You're talking about a thing over three years. Three year minimum rate right increase. But five, you're not going to five more likely. Go up in the three years, right? Uh, we actually handed out draft. Let's see. Let's see. is mainly for the water treatment plant. Yep. That's what the it's next, the 2017 is just a few cents more. Was that in uh, 2018, you mean, right? 2018, 2018, would, would, 2018 would that do indebtedness would come on ourselves. We could do everything, including the $600,000 reserve and pay our bills and the salaries of these people. And it would cost us $63. 19 and 20. Small. That's small. Yeah. 3%, 3%. That's when we And if for that. some reason we came up with a 4% or a 3% okay. loan, that would give us a little more money. Right. But B-Res, the B-Res is more project. I was going to ask about that. That's not, oh, the only indebtedness. To me, that's just until there's, there's the $500,000 in there. That would get us through the engineering study and tell us what we're going to build and what the cost will be. Then we have to do 218 to cover. Now that was that. That's a state money or. In fact, Jim, Jim did a tremendous amount on it. That was the money we borrowed from the state interest free, but we have to start paying it back for planning. Yes. We borrowed five hundred thousand dollars for that. We haven't borrowed anything yet. Yeah. We haven't borrowed yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's in here. It's in there. It's in the budget to be borrowed. Yeah. This year's budget. Yes. Are we starting to do any our return on investment on any of these projects at all, where we're getting some sort of income back from doing them? Uh, um, well, I don't know about return on. Investment. <laughs> yeah, return on investment. How, how would that work? The process water recycle project. The return on we're, we're getting we're getting debt on investment. We're not getting return on investment. Well, I, I, the return on investment on the process water recycle project, you have to take into consideration the fines that would be levied on you based on the uh, but no, things. So on that's what I, what I was thinking. Ten thousand a day. So, so your return on investment on the process recycle pro process water recycle project is the fines that you will not be paying because you will be not violating your NPDES permit. That's your return. That's your return on investment. How much and do we pay a year on an NPDES permit? To to maintain it. Whatever it is. He's, he didn't hear you say the word fines. Fines. The fines you will not be levied. No, I'm saying. Okay. Well, there's two ways of not getting. I'm not going to get into the other one, but uh, that would not resolve in fines. But. That's no, the only kind of no, return no, on investment we can look at. Well, no, please, and, and please you, get into that. I want to hear your thought on that because there is no way out of the NPDES permit 
Once it expires, we are being fined ten thousand dollars a day, I think. So that's three hundred thousand a month, or approximately, you know, three point six million a year. It's just a number that doesn't go away. It's not an imaginary number. It's the number they've told us. So it would bankrupt us. Yeah, at three point six million a year, it would bankrupt us, and so well, we'll never get there. It's not an op it's not an optional number that you can ignore. But I want to talk about something else. I'll talk about it another time, not tonight. I just wanted to ask what the return on investment is. This is a business. It is a, you know, utility, but it's still a business. And we need to look at some return on investment. We're talking about a lot of money here. And are, are we going to get payback on some of these things? If there is none, then say there's none. But at least let's so, so say that. You're avoiding penalties. So no. It's a $3.6 million a year. That's well, I, I think that's false. That's for well, I don't. We're, first of all, we're not a business. We yeah, can't we're, make we're not a profit. For pro we're not for profit. We can't make a profit, so we can't have a return on investment. That's and the way I've always looked at it. I'll bring it back to we're more a service company than a water company. Right. When you're a service company, you charge what people are willing to pay for that service. Can't make a profit in ours. Other service right. companies can't make profit. profit. If you want a return on investment, then you need to be on the board for Del Oro, and then you'll see a return on investment because then they'll they'll, they'll give that's, you yeah, they'll give you a return on investment there. You're not going to see that here. So. <coughs> I have another question. Uh, let's go to the uh, it's up on the wall here, I guess. Uh, 2018. Right now, in the lower rates, we have about. Is I remember 30 percent round figure <coughs> the people are at the lower rates okay so say if we and they have the option of that 3k plan which would be forty one dollars and seventy four cents what will that do for our indebtedness payment what would we have to do do we have to raise someplace along the line because that would be almost 20 bucks off per meter per month Going here to the revenue estimate. Do you have your little Excel catalog or Excel spreadsheet? Uh, I, I tell me, tell me, you probably know it better. Where? It's in the revenue section. Revenue projection right there. So you can see, Doug, even though we're looking at eight point two million dollars, we did a revenue projection. And we're looking at 7.8 million in 2016 and 9 million in 2018. That's less. And, and I'm trying to be upfront with the board. What that is, is a calculation if every customer picked the perfect plan for themselves because they used water in 2014. So if we use more, if they use more water, we'll get more revenue. And it's such a new <clears throat> now, this is such a new process, plan, way of doing business. Um, we have a cost of service study. Now that we've worked our way through it, I'm willing to stamp it. You approve it, we get it through the process. The majority of the work's done. So we'll get to the end of the <coughs> budget here, and I'll redo all these figures, and it's coming back to the board every year. This is a cost of service study. <coughs> get one every year and, and it'll be related to the most recent budget. We'll see how people picked plans. We'll be known by that point how they use water in the summer. So we'll, we'll be able to make adjustments. Does that, allow, does that allow for a drought here? Pardon? Did you allow for drought in that? Uh, yeah, I mean, and we have drought rates. <coughs> but it's based on 2014 use. And it makes us much more resilient to drought than we currently are with our current plan. Well, that's part of the key thing on this $600,000 per year reserve is to help cover, like we figured we lost $700,000 because of the lost revenue. And so that's just one year of that, plus the best stuff. So what, what we're trying to get to Kevin and I is a is a point where we can bring this back to you every year and you can review it and at that point you can say, Yeah, let's do Prop 218. We'll done all the heavy lifting with legal at that 
point. So for ten, twelve thousand dollars for mailing and prep and all that stuff, uh, we can do true eighteen every year. Well, yeah, we would have to have it annually to to project our revenue because by that time we'll know what a lot of the people are going to want to plan, K plan they're going to be on, and uh, let's say everything is peachy key, the reservoir spills till July, like it has in the past, and so the brow doesn't put too many more 25 percent on us here, so we can pass it down the creek. Yeah. Thank you, George. Oh, I can. Uh, would like for you to, Kevin, go back to the uh, uh, slide there. In fact, I don't know whether it was in your presentation or on <coughs> this, where uh, you're asking for guidance. You had those bullet points. Can I can I point, point something out too, just really quickly that I think is important oh, to show? Is uh, here's here's a uh, comparison to local agencies. We compared ourselves uh, to Cal Water Orville, Cal Water Chico, Lime Saddle, and Paradise Pines. And did you put that new raise that, or that Chico just had? In uh, I went on their website and tried to do the best I could. Oh, okay. uh, so I, but this is right off of their website rate calculation, and um, so I don't think that we're we're the yellow line. So I'm just kind of give everybody. Yeah, and an what idea. we did with this, I mean, you could do it many different ways. But we're trying to demonstrate if you're a person that uses four units on a regular basis, trying to compare that versus someone that uses eight, so that you'd be on the other plan. Um, so this isn't the 10K plan spread over those number of units. This is our optional plan. This is customer choice, which customers would have a choice at any time throughout the year to change to any of these plans that would best suit their water usage. So I, I think this is a, uh, a graph that shows that we, even with the rates and maybe there's increases in there to some customers, we're very much within the ballpark of our local agencies around us, our surrounding agencies. Okay, sorry, Ken, what would you like to see? The bullet points the of bullet George points is that looking he wants for direction decisions tonight. And then uh, while, while he's pulling that up, I'll, I'll bring it to the board here. There's a lot of different aspects we, uh, we have perhaps that we want to ask questions about or get into or discuss. I think that uh, one question that I would like to ask the board now is uh, after this presentation and you've seen where our debt is and where our rates are and what we're trying to do, uh, are there any board members here that want to advocate a no rate increase? Because if there are, then, and the majority of the board says, well, we don't want to do a rate increase this year, then we can shut her down. There's no need to talk anymore. Yes, Bill? I don't think any of us, we know we can't, we have to have a rate increase. We're in the hole and getting worse. The problem I have is whether we have a three year or one year, and how much do we do? Do we do some more homework um, on this? We, we've done a ton of homework. Uh, Bill, George has the committee has met I think three times on it. Okay, the here's, committee a, is here's an announcement that came out from the water board today. State water board announces workshops on drinking water system operating fees. Tuesday, December eighth in Reading, one to three p.m. at Central Valley Regional Water Board. They're going to be discussing just what we're discussing tonight for all the water districts at one to ten. <clears throat> so, what is your recommendation? Your recommendation is that we don't move until we go and visit no, that meeting? No, the recommendation is if we pass a water rate increase, that will cover our existing costs and things, get us out of the hole as fast as we can. But I don't want to be pressured. I got this thing this morning because I came up to the office and got it. Uh, when was it available, Bill? I don't know, Georgiana, when was it available? This morning? For other uh, George no. Emailed it. George emailed it on. Wednesday. Yeah, I know, but I don't, this is Wednesday, this. Wednesday last week. No, I, yeah, but I didn't want to sit there and read all these pages over a computer, a slow old computer that I have. Anyway, this, so I got this today, and I gather 
by the way that some of the other directors were reading this as I was. I got it tonight like everybody else. Um, this is a major deal. This is not a little thing. Would you like to address that, George? I just want to remind the public and the board, we're not deciding whether you approve these tonight or not. That'll happen next Tuesday. So you got more time to review it. This, this whole point is explaining it to the board, getting their questions answered, and getting the direction that I need in these key areas so I can finalize the report. And remember also your, your potential action on Tuesday is to send a public notice out and start that 45 day public comment and review period. You do, then do we, come back. We're gonna send out the 218 notice now after this meeting? No. No, oh, on Tuesday, Tuesday, your potential action is to send the notice out and start that 45 day period. And then at the end of January would be the earliest occasion when you could actually take action to potentially implement the rate change. Now that's, we're gonna have a regular board meeting on Tuesday though. Correct. Yes. So if people really wanna come and talk to us about this rate change, they can do it on Tuesday. But yeah. that discussion would be whether you should issue the notice or not. Yeah, well, it's the, the, yeah. The other their part. actual protest would not come until after you've taken action. And then they have another 45 days to review it. Okay, I went on the internet to check out our pages on, and there's there was nothing about this meeting there. Maybe I didn't get to the right thing, but it's possible I do make mistakes. But there was nothing about this meeting tonight on there. There is a thing about next the next Tuesday's meeting. Or placed it right on the front page, right on the right-hand side ribbon. Well, I looked up on board meeting dates, and this there was nothing. It's just when I went down. There's a big banner right on the front screen. The front screen, you missed it. Oh, okay. So those are these are my concerns. I, I'm not trying to run somebody down or anything. I just want to make sure we're going through it, and the public has a, a chance to give some input into it. But, but keep in mind, this, this is a cost of service study it is that, that I'm going to stamp with my civil engineer's license. So I'm asking for these input areas where the board needs to give me direction on how they want to proceed. And then the report gets finalized. That's my report. Well, what so part of this let is, me finish. Okay, I was just going to ask you where so, part of the meeting. Thank so you. next Tuesday is when you actually finalize it. So this workshop wasn't was was directed to get some board input to me on this cost of service study. You, you put down here, as I understood re reading and what we were talking about the next time, we would we would do no approval of anything. I, it's strictly a workshop. Right. We're reviewing You're going to give me, I, I mean, there's direction, but no approval. presentation, and you can tell there's been a lot of work done on this thing here. But I need more time to chew on it than talk to those people out there to see what they're saying now. Uh, and the people that are not out there. But anyway, uh, we got 45 days. Whatever, whatever happens on next Tuesday, we got it'll, it'll and if it passes then it'll go out for a 45 day review then when will they be voting on it That's january 28th or 45 29th. days then january they will 20th. find out on the 28th of august of uh, january pardon me or the 29th if we make it the 29th that the ballots will be going out however they go out on no they'll go out there the this, 45 day notice is the ballot this Oh, this is, is the notice. Oh, okay, see, I've never been so through this. I, the 28th or the 29th is the deadline for them to turn their well, protests in. in. Yes. They have 45 days. This and is, then we have a meeting to hear from the public again on that day, count up the last few ballots that come in. Now, if the public wanted to have another meeting in between on that 45 days, George, you said they could do that. Oh, if you if the if board you wants, want. if you yeah, want me to pursue a board, board say, I, we need more time. We need more another meeting to evaluate this thing. Then we would call for another meeting, and we could have it. Yeah. If if you want me to explain it further to more public during the forty-five days, I have no problem doing that. Just so we're clear, that's not legally required. Right, you're, that's you're, right. You're not legally required. Legally, 
But the night's not legally required no, either. it's not. I mean, you this could, is above and beyond. You can agendize this at a regular or special meeting, adopt the notice, not less than 45 day, days later, if you don't have a majority protest, you can implement the change. So you're already, because you're here tonight doing a workshop, you're going above and beyond what Proposition 218 requires. No, right. And you can have another workshop during the 45 day period if you like, or we're going to have a couple, probably a couple of regular board meetings. We could just stack it we as an information item as part of one of the regular meetings. Not, not counting next Tuesdays, but the, after that we would have. Well, that one in January. January. Next Tuesday in the meeting in January, that's your two meetings. Yeah. What regular you? meetings, and then you could put a different one in there. Are we going to, the 20, if we have it on the 28th, we're still going to have it on the regular time too? Our regular right. meeting yes. on the third Wednesday. Twenty-eighth is the deadline. Yes, yeah. we're we, we can have an information item. Yeah. Right. I mean, we can put it on the agenda. Yeah. So we will have, we will have one more regular meeting before the hearing date. Yes. So I would characterize your action, your possible action on Tuesday, as a proposal to the customers. Mr. Customer, this is what we're proposing for a rate change. That then starts that forty-five day clock. At the end of the 45 days, the customers give you the answer. Is the proposal acceptable or not? And if they do not file a majority protest, then you as a board can implement the change. You see, one of the things that I was hoping for, and some of the other businesses I've been involved with, is we would have had the amount that was going to be handled to keep the boat afloat. You know, it was just full of water right now. The amount of money that was going to be needed to pay off our indebtedness, existing indebtedness, and the amount of money that would be needed for our 14.5 mil or whatever it happens to be. And it looks like if everybody went with the 10K plan, it would be less than $10 until 18, and then it would go up to whatever that other new figure was. But I haven't remembered those on there. It depends how on much do we have? Okay, how much do we have to have coming in Per ten meter, ten thousand. Some place in there, I saw eleven thousand meters. Too. Where did that come from? Those are equivalent meters. So that oh, well, uh, okay, adds up meter. all the bigger meters. I, I kind of Sixty dollars, forty cents. But let's say we have cents. okay, eleven thousand equivalent meters or ten thousand. How much do we have to have per meter to pay the bills? Sixty seventy two. You've asked that several times now. Sixty dollars. Minus plus. six. Minus well, six hundred thousand. Yeah, they have. Nobody has answered it yet. They, listen to the answer. The they have they answered the it. Sixty dollars. Sixty two dollars. I, I wanted it itemized down. This way, it. Done. There it is, right there. Oh, I, I read this thing. Yeah. Okay, per equivalent meter. All right, I remember reading that. Yeah. I, I can't. But, that, but that's to pay all of the fees. Or I had it broken down into three, four different fees, you know. Well, the, so out of the sixty-two seventy-two, in in year one, the only thing that would reduce that is reducing the six hundred thousand dollars, and that's what would keep the doors open with absolutely not reserving any money. Now this is a, this is not eighteen. This is on seventeen. This 16, is sixteen. 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 16, 16, 16 yeah. But the, the new debt is only forty thousand dollars in seventeen. Is that designed to pay the rest of the engineering fees? Or no, that's just because we expect the debt to start a little bit in 2017. That's that's is that interest and principal or just interest? It's both. Both yeah. interest and principal. Okay. Um, one comment on this uh, fire: we use HCF, but there's no definition in our rate pamphlet we put out there is a definition on what HCF means and I would think that would add some like confusion I offhand I don't know what HCF means I found out tonight and looked in the pamphlet but I looked through there maybe I missed it but I sure didn't see any explanation for HCF anyway Tanya will address that this, this is a draft Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. Yeah. On the, the business uh, one. Um, 
unit to acre I feet it or the hundred unit detail. scale. Yeah. Uh, so many that, different ways in water, yeah, the water business. To we measure. we felt it would be good to get it into gallons because most everybody understands a gallon, at least a gallon of milk. Yeah, and and I can tell you the committee wanted me to evaluate billing in gallons, and that would have been. Uh, a significant change to our billing system um, and our meters read in cubic feet not gallons so then there's always this calculation uh, but going forward we'll bill in hundreds of a unit instead of single units yeah, it'll make more sense and if we just have a little always a little road map on the bills and on notices like this then if people choose to determine what a hundred acre feet is does, in terms of gallons they can do so it does say what a unit is on our bill right yeah. well i thought it uh, it's 750 it's gallons i thought it said 748 does it say it on there? i, I thought, thought it did, it did. i thought i read it, it somewhere <laughs> i thought that i did too and the, the way we're billing now that really works out well because we can tell the difference of water usage now and 13 it's really great with the graph well, here, here's what I would like to suggest. I'd like, if the board is agreeable to this, I'd go to the public for to uh, garner some comments now, uh, then bring it back to the board after the public has had a chance to provide us with input, and then we'll just tackle these topics uh, one at a time and take care of maybe some of the easy, easier ones, like you know the, the hearing date. Are we all set on this schedule? The reserving and the irrigation and local agency rules and you know three three year four year five year rate period uh, time before we do that mr. president I would like to get some clarification from the finance committee and staff on the recommendation of three or five years if we can go back to prop 218 very easily now that all the footwork's been done then a three-year plan might be more prudent if we incur any other costs or the bee reservoir went belly up or something happened that we can't foresee and the government steps in with yet another project for us. But did you guys have a recommendation? Well, the advantage of the five year is that if we did everything correctly, then we don't have to do a 218 for five years. At least we save another ten, twelve thousand dollars that, That's correct. But in, if, if if we, we make a mistake, if then something changes, we can do if it. there's another drought, if we get a project lopped upon us by the state of California that then says, yes, we need to go spend another amount of money um, that we weren't planning on, um, then that is something where the three year would come in and going back to 218 would be a lot easier. But by doing five years, you're not locking yourself in. Yeah, you're, you're not. Can still, okay, that's what you I want to know. We can still, I thought I heard somebody say we can go back to 218 anytime. Yes. Right. And, and if we also, we can reduce rates without 218. Yeah. Uh, but it's our intent, as George had mentioned, is at every year we're going to have a board meeting we're gonna, where we're going to say, okay, well, we've created our new budget now. Now what is this budget going to look like compared to our rate structure and the last year's usage? And usage. Exactly. And then we're going to say, ha, ah, we, uh, we have a problem. Yes. We don't have enough money because usage patterns weren't what we thought. And even after the first year, we might say we're going to have to proceed with a 218. As long as we're not locked in, the five-year plan definitely keeps us at a better, yeah, I think, at a better place. Time. And I just wanted to know was that your yeah. guys' recommendation was the five years? It's a five-year, but we're not locked in, so we can go back after the first, second, third, fourth. See, my positive thinking is, in a year, we're going to say we nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well I don't think positive. that's the case. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm sure the public is too. Yeah. Okay. I would suggest a break maybe for before we go into the public. Everybody can get up and walk around a little bit. And sit here for a while. Okay, an hour and twenty minutes. Sure. Uh, we'll take a five minute break when we get back. Yeah, so make it there's, there's coffee, there's water, there's restrooms, and uh, we'll be right back and when we come back it's in my desk. I left it. Vent. <laughs> oh yeah, don't get them mad already. <laughs> okay, we'll reconvene our meeting at uh, looks like about 6, 20, 28 or 29. And at this point, uh, I'm going to go to the public for a public comment. 
This is specifically for the agenda topic, which is, the, as you know, the rate increase. And uh, here we're going to, once again, allow a public member to speak up to a maximum of five minutes. Uh, once you've had your, your bite at the apple and you have spoken, uh, you're excluded from going back up and continuing to have, uh, have speeches to, to make. So make the points that you would like. You will get another opportunity, however, and that is after the public has spoken their first round, I'll bring it back to the board, we'll discuss it, we may clarify things with, uh, with the staff, and um, uh, before we actually move on and give direction then, because some new things may have come up, I'll go back to the public for a second time. So at this time, um, is there anybody that would like to speak to us about the proposed rate increases? Go ahead, John. John Remelia. First, the board has no choice but to go forward with this. The district is, I mean, four months from insolvency, six months from not being able to pay its bills somewhere July or August of next year. So there's no choice. The one thing that I see and the way George expressed it is this this large meter thing is going to uh, on multifamily residential is going to hit a double blow and that's a lot of the people in the community that can't afford it the renters the people that can't afford to buy their houses and you know the way it was explained that the 218 requirements but if there's if there's some way to look at something in there and whether they've already done it and there's nothing that can be done uh, I just see and I had rental properties in the past I got <laughs> rid of them because I live 300 miles from them uh, now and the first thing a landlord's gonna see when he sees his water bill go up and maybe it's $25 he's not gonna say well I'm just gonna cover that everybody that rents in this town because the water bill goes to the property owner. The first thing everybody's going to do is everybody's going to see a $50 increase in their rents. And a lot of people can't afford it. But the district is in a, in a rough position on this. Uh, if there's something we can do with the large meters when they're for residential use, uh, I, I think it's something uh, big to do. The other thing I would like to ask is if there is a water rate meeting in Reading at the Water Board on the 8th, uh, I think this district should at least have one representative there to see what is said. The reason being, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, Kevin Bernard, that's over to Los Alamos Community Service District today, and they're in the same boat. They've taken a big hit because of this conservation issue, and they're having, they're having not as drastic as what we're having, but maybe there's some relief in sight from the state, and uh, I, I think it, it would be a great advantage, whether it's somebody sitting over at the side table here or some board members. Uh, I don't know how it affects the Brown Act if you ended up with two or three or three of you or more down there, but uh, I think I think it would make a lot of sense to get there, listen to them, and get some input because there's a lot of other districts that are in the same position. Thank you. Thank you, John. Mr. President, point of clarification. It's my understanding that meeting is about what the state is going to charge districts for overseeing treatment plants because what they how they used to bill us for oh. all of our um, treatment permits etc is getting changed and that's what that oh. meeting is about is how they're going to change what they charge us so they're lowering the costs right. basically that's what the meeting <laughs> is yeah. Yeah. probably not <laughs> but they're changing the way it's done calculating and you don't know how it's going to affect us it'll be more well, I know it'll be more. <laughs> yeah, I know, really. I know, really. Much more. <laughs> Crystal Ball Cooper just came up with that one right there. And I know it'll be more. <laughs> that was a pretty just good Just pull that right out. Yeah. It'll be more. 
Okay, back to the public. Uh, thank you for the clarification, George. Um, any other public speakers? I just ask you to identify yourself and whether you're a, uh, a Republican uh, or a Democrat. <laughs> uh, no, whether whether you're a uh, one one of our customers, one of our users, or I mean, you know, because public members can be up here from Chico to speak to. Us. Uh, yes, I'm Mike Trinka. I'm a district manager for the Paradise Recreation and Park District and obviously going to speak on the local agencies. Um, you know, I, I, I like what George has, has prepared and what he's presented to you on that. Um, I, I just want to be sure that the board understands that um, whatever way you go, uh, water in California has changed forever. Um, it's not going to matter if the, if the lake is full. Um, Paradise Recreation Park District, our, our policies, we're cutting back on, on green space. Uh, we've got restrictions now on some of our water rights. So um, we've just taken it as water in California, the rules and regs are changing. And obviously you know that more than we do. So any break you can give us is great. Uh, obviously any public agency that's in here, um, it's, it's all about serving the public. And, and these affect the public if it affects us. So. I um, encourage you to stay with George's plan. I think it's a good one. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, too. Mike. Any other public members would like to address us? Neil? Neil Nessela. Uh, I live on Grindle Circle and I pay rates and uh, taxes on a couple properties here in Paradise. Uh, yeah, I'm going to speak to the local agency irrigation rec uh, rate issue. Uh, there's a few things that are troubling me on, on that general issue. One is that I don't believe it's been made clear in the document that's before you what the impact is on the other rate payers as we favor a certain group of rate payers in this way. I think that that's something that should be disclosed so that people have a sense for what the impact to me. Uh, local agencies. If you look at the list of local agencies that are currently in PIA's billing system, they're not necessarily local and they're not necessarily agencies. Granted, there's the Town of Paradise, there's the Rec and Park District. There are people or agencies there that are local and there are agencies, but there are also corporations there and there are entities like the federal government with the post office site, state of California, and not all of these sites could be argued as that they're parks where people can enjoy themselves and, and get a chance to romp on the green grass. I mean, there's some of these sites are, are arguably not even accessible to the public unless the public happens to have a child in the particular charter school or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> I, I do agree with the idea that irrigation customers should get some special consideration. The heritage of this irrigation district was built on irrigation customers and, and local farming. I guess I feel like the way that that was done wasn't presented really in tonight's uh, discussion of this document. And reading the document myself, I, I can't help but feel that it's maybe a bit arbitrary in the way that it was determined how that adjustment was made. I would feel better seeing a, a documentation in a rate study like this that would look at, well, how much can we really say that it's costing us to treat water and to provide a product that these irrigators don't necessarily need. I think that if we could look at how it is that the, the cost of service is different to an irrigator who could use raw water versus a, a, a domestic customer who needs treated water, that that would be something that would be more defensible when this, this plan is put out and it, it could perhaps protect us in the event that there's some kind of challenge to the rates. I think that's about all I have time for, so I'd just like to leave you with that. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Neil. you. Any other members from the public? Would anyone like to address us at this time? There being, there being none, then we'll bring it back to the board. Yes, Bill, you had a comment? Yeah, I have an issue. Years ago, I was on the cemetery district with uh, Larry. And the PID had raised the rates. This was the time they had to put security in the office and everything because they didn't tell anybody and we had all sorts of complaints here. I wasn't on the PID board at the time. 
What we did there at the cemetery is we drilled a well to counteract the increase in prices. We paid for the well in three years. The well's still operating. It's next to a creek that's almost dried up this year, but it, we have to be careful. If we want raise these rates enough, all we're going to do is have people drill small wells. And there's wells around this town that are 100 feet deep, and they are small wells, maybe six to eight inches in diameter, and they get enough. And the other token is that I have some friends who have their wells, they called me last year, didn't need to call this year. They, their wells went dry, and they were asking whether PID had put in a well in that area, which we did and don't have. But they were concerned about the water table going down. But the wells and water table seems to go together. There's a bunch of information I think it's confirming is what's happened in the San Joaquin Valley with farming. And it's been one large farm out of Merced bought two well drilling companies because they wanted their wells to be in line. The first one drilled their wells four or 500 feet deep, got them running and sold the well drilling companies. And they had all sorts of business. But in the meantime, the floor of the valley has continued to fall because they're mining water in the San Joaquin Valley. And we're a very small area, but the same thing can happen here. And if you raise the rates too high, and you'll give good justification for somebody drilling a small well and being paid for it in a short time. That's it. OK. <laughs> I'm not not real sure what that was in, in favor of, Bill, myself. Um, but, George, I would ask you if you would speak again to the, uh, uh, the subsidies to the local agencies. You did cover uh, it in your, in your chart and your, your uh, graph there, but perhaps not enough to be understood. The fact that we have, uh, uh, in fact, I, it, I, I can't, I don't know where to point to it right now, but you can, you can show what this uh, reduction in water fees or the subsidy would be mm -hmm. uh, for the local agencies as well as the irrigation accounts yep. uh, and where the money is coming from to pay for that subsidy. Uh, so, you know, because Neil made a point there about, um, about the fact that the irrigation customers don't really need treated water and perhaps that would be a defensible reason for not charging them. But the matter of fact is we already have the defense because we're using other revenues to pay for that re that subsidy. Yeah, to me, you know, yes, one way you could justify it is by calculating all the costs of our treatment plant. Um, in many plants, you can say it costs X amount of dollars per gallon to treat water. In ours, it just be a matter of taking the budget of our treatment plant and extracting it out, but it really doesn't vary upon how much water we produce like many agencies. So that's why it's not in the plan as far as calculating the cost of treating water um, because it's kind of arbitrary. It's not something that changes. It's fixed. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't really, if the irrigators use all the water they use or they don't use the water we use, the treatment plant costs are essentially the same. So to put that in a, a service study that somehow we, we can justify that cost is less, um, I don't think it's appropriate because our costs really aren't less whether we serve 5,000 acre feet or 6,000 acre feet. Our costs start changing when we start selling eight and 9,000 acre feet because we need to start in increasing supply. But um, so I, I disagree with Neil that that would be an appropriate way to deal with that. Um, yes, the 35 cents, uh, the dollar drop is somewhat arbitrary. Um, that's why we're here with the board uh, to get direction on that. Um, it could be more, it could be less. We have that amount of $366,000 that the board has uh, in this study to, to play with, and we've chewed up whatever we did. Got 81,000 left, so if you wanna cut it lower, we could adjust that and even make the per unit rate lower or the per service charge lower. Um, that, that's 
the kind of direction you can give me on that because that's truly um, a public policy decision, not an engineering decision. Question? Go ahead, Larry. How many, how many uh, accounts? Services, how many accounts are we talking about? 75, I think. 75. Irrigation. Somewhere around there. Irrigation, local agency, et cetera. Uh -huh. And uh, do you have any idea what percent of their, our water they use? Not off the top of my head. Right. The, uh, the other thing is that you, we point when I'm on the ad hoc committee, and the thing that was interesting to me was that this is Paradise Irrigation District. It's not Paradise Drinking Water District. Yep. <laughs> and when they first spent that money on that dam, nobody was using it for drinking water. It was being used, they were open ditches and everything and everyone had their own well and then lo and behold people started hooking up to it on their own and so then then we found out that we had that we we're providing drinking water and because of that we have a filtration plant which really increased the rates mm -hmm. so I feel I feel very sympathetic to the ag people because they're you know even at 35 cents a gallon or a, a unit is uh, quite a bit of money, I think. Yeah, they're, they're going to see an increase from where right. their they're current rates are. What, what's kind of a, an average number? We, we all know who our, our largest, you know, uh, our, our largest producer of any type of fruit well, or vegetable in this town is. So Their biggest hit's going to come on the monthly service charge. But right now, a four-inch meter is $106 a month. And in the proposal on the 3K, I think that's... Three fifty or three something. I think higher than that. The four inch. Now that was a three inch. Was about three fifty, I believe. So four inch. Yeah. Where you get to? Where did it go? There it is. Five five ninety one. So yeah, there, it's a significant hit to them on the monthly service charge. Monthly charge. Yeah. And we didn't just arbitrarily come up with the thirty five cents. We actually uh, reviewed all of the accounts that were associated with those rates I didn't. and found the. Uh, that they're going to have an increase, but an increase that's not going to break the bank. Right. I didn't think it was arbitrary. Did, did you talk to any of them? Uh, we haven't talked to the Ag yet, no. Did you talk to Nobles? You didn't talk to Nobles? I did not yet, no. I was kind of looking for them to be here tonight. Mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised they're not here. So they will get. And again, the three K is going Dustin to Dustin tells me wrong. You can make an adjustment up here. Yeah, provided you don't exceed that total non profit receiving revenue. No. I do have a question about and, that. And we didn't bring that up. There, there's other agencies in California that use non rate revenue to subsidize various rates. Uh, and my, my confusion on that, and I should have asked it in committee, but I didn't, was um, that. The, the first number, the 211,000 or some, some number for outside water sales or maybe mm -hmm. it was 111,000. How, that, that seems, I mean, that seems like it's drinking water revenue. Why is that separated out? Outside water revenue is the money Del Oro pays us to treat and deliver their water from. So the, okay, from so water. it's not the emergency allotment that we've sold to him in the past. No, it's just, no. Okay, so we, we're, we so would have to count it, back. It's, it's key to outside water sales. Because the outside water The outside comes water in. is their outside and they're paying us to treat okay. it and deliver it to them. In other words, I, as I recall correctly, they get two acre foot, is that it? What do they have? A 200 acre foot or what is it? It's around 300, 285 200 acre, acre feet. And they pay us $111,000 to treat it. On or average. Yeah. Are they still able to pump out of uh, the reservoir like Oroville? It keeps going down. Uh, that set, the, Del, the Lime Saddle District of Del Oro has, is solely on Lake Oroville. So they have transitioned so that um, water they get out of the Hendricks Canal just goes to the Pines. So that's where the 111. It used to be higher because we had a higher rate for delivering it down at um, Lime Saddle. But they don't use it down there anymore. 
Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate Neil saying what he did because there was a lot of things he mentioned that I didn't realize was in was in the agencies, which I didn't think of the post office being in there, and, and they're charging enough already. <laughs> but I doubt if they use that much water. I mean, you could. Well, we call I, them I local give, agencies. Why is a post office a local agency? It's it, <laughs> well, it, it, it falls in there. it's government. And so we, if you want to refine that list, we can provide that to you. That's fine to make it true local agency. What size meter does a place like that have? What the post office? Residential size. Yeah, they don't have much water usage. Yeah. Restrooms. Restaurants use them. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably our this hospital. I couldn't imagine them on a three inch hospital meter. Hospital is a business. Hospital is a business. Oh, business. Oh, it's not. The big ones are schools and parks and rec. Parks and rec. And used to be the cemetery until they dug their own well. Uh, town's park. Hospitals of business. Hospitals of business. Okay, well, let's see if we can if we can start uh, moving forward to knock off some of our topics here. Uh, and of course, before we give George and staff final direction, I'm going to go back to the public again for comments. Maybe the easiest one would be talking about uh, uh, setting date. this hearing date. Uh, George has given us the outline. Uh, we have the meeting tonight. We have a board meeting next Tuesday where uh, uh, we would be able to discuss it as a board. And if we come to agreement, a majority vote, then we set a uh, uh, proposal for the clients, for the customers. At that date, we would then uh, have our plan on having our mailers out by whatever Thursday or, or something like that 45 days in advance of the January 28th target date yes okay so are, are we do we have problems we issues don't need with that? what do you want just concurrence or we don't need motions do we well you're gonna you're gonna set the date Tuesday so if I know now I can get it in the document in the thing. okay well and, I would and, agree with January the 28th a Thursday. Do we need a motion or just no, well, no motion? No motion. And I'd like to go back to the We're public to, before we. No, then we need the hearing. Yeah, the hearing date is going to be not January the 28th. It's going to be December the 8th. No, the, no, no, the hearing date is January 28th. No, the hearing date is That's after the, the 45th. Okay. But we'll, we'll, we'll make the final approval on that on next Tuesday. If we want to yes. be yeah, if absolutely yeah. perfect, the 29th Friday would probably give Cedar Creek a breath of relief. Did she, extra day. <laughs> did she wiggle her brows at you to get an extra day or something? <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. There's there's Saturday and Sunday. And <laughs> okay. Twenty ninth. Yeah, I think we should we should push. Go ahead and move for that that day. Yeah. Good day. Bill. Right. Uh, I take Don, Dustin's thing if I understood him right. No comment because I don't. Can we even do this? We're not taking a vote on something. We're not. What you're doing is you're giving Just direction. Concern, to, we're giving direction. Give me direction. Sounds like a vote to me. Uh, well, all you're all you're deciding is in the pamphlet you're going to review on Tuesday. What date do you want in the upper corner? So you're not approving the document. You're just telling George what. What you want to see well, in the document? Maybe there's other corrections we need to make in that document, just not the date. Well, then any let's. Other things that we might plan between. We just got this thing tonight, so yeah. Have That's fine. Right. I imagine there will be things that that will be. And you so can we'll, change we'll, it we'll Tuesday. We, will we have that document that would go out to the public for the 45 days before next Tuesday? Yes. Probably on Friday. It'll be in the agenda Friday. Probably on Monday. <laughs> when Thankfully, is Tuesday is a special meeting, so the agenda has to be out 24 oh, hours. 24 in hours. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so we covered that one. All right, we have. Um, how about res how about uh, the reserving policy of uh, six hundred thousand dollars a year for the next five years to get a three? It says strategy. I think indicate that George says he's not going to he doesn't know if he can keep that every year right right our strategy so is we, for 600,000 we've yeah. talked about strategy before 
and how much I've been talking about it for four or five years and how much have we put aside stuck Gone. Yeah. Okay. And Gone. that's that's the strategy. We're going to have to oh, talk about a, strategy. I mean, what says board direction on the computer here? I, I didn't bring that up out of anything else, and to say instead of it just says reserving strategy. That's yeah. I'd like to adopt the reserving strategy that George proposed. So would I. Six hundred thousand in the next five years. Me too. Okay. And then I'm along the same lines, or whatever the number we end up with, or we, I think. Doug, you're on board with the reserving strategy. Yeah, I'm on board with that one too. Okay. Thank you. I think, I think we'd be foolish if we weren't on board with it. Okay. Because if you go back to page 15, which uh, I know Sepp's tired of me talking about page 15 and so am I, but on 09 and 10, we had actually several million dollars worth of restricted money that's just disappeared on here. Now with these reserves, well, it didn't disappear. It didn't just disappear. <laughs> it, just, it just didn't disappear. We just didn't have it. We just didn't have a rate increase. The pull it out. We get we get our first year. We get six hundred thousand dollars in there. Okay, before we could pull out that six hundred thousand or any part of it, it has to come before the board. No, well, it goes in the budget, and every year the budget you decide whether we add to the okay, reserves well, or we subtract. One way or the other, it goes in the budget, then we pull it back out. We, uh, yeah, we either, either spend it or not. Really? Hopefully I mean, not. The, object, the objective will be to leave it in because we're trying to build the reserve account. Right. So that would be that's the really the objective there in, in the term reserve. Really, so going up to the top on a three to five year rate proposal, we'll be discussing this in more detail, and I can see the plus and minuses of it. But if we had a, if we had, had this in front of us in 11 and 12, we may not be in the financial shape we're in right now. If we would have looked at it and realized that we were going to be out of money now, which we are, oh, but I we didn't did know that in eleven or twelve. We, no, we did know. We, we actually, know actually the budget. We did. But actually, wow. we did know that. We did know that. But the board at that time did not want to vote for a higher rate increase because we of the way the there. economy was. So we never. We went there. for. Yes, we did. We, we actually. Didn't. I was on this board, and I kept. It, well, you got mad I, at me because I kept mentioning it. We didn't pursue it, and we didn't look at it. Kevin, how, how many years have you had a five-year projection on the uh, on the budget and the plans that you present to us? At least six. Six years. And it stays right At here. least six well, years. Nine, nine, and, okay. nine and ten, we had a you real good idea. That? Yeah, and I'll read, I'll read his words. The district will have to raise revenues by either increasing rates or receiving grants or cutting expenses. That's Kevin's words. Okay. Love that. Yeah, we, and we knew that when we, we did do the, any of that. We no, we knew that during that right the last now. rate increase. It's continued. We did not do any of that, gentlemen. I know, but we're doing that now, so that's yeah. Good. When we're yeah. down there, the horse is almost out of the barn. Okay, yeah. then, then let's get it back in. Okay. <laughs> Are you cutting that's expenses last, somewhere? somewhere? I haven't heard anything about cutting we expenses. Delayed capital projects. Yep. Maybe. Yeah, and we'll we'll give you an opportunity to talk about cutting expenses because uh, I next, figured that we, meeting, we should. Yes, I know. No, right now, if you want to. No, uh, uh, next meeting. Okay, uh, so, so and we will. Uh, are we? Uh, uh, you know, we concur. The on the, the, the committee uh, would prefer the five-year plan, and yeah. the main reason for a five-year plan is because we've got the first three years strictly budgeted out on the approximate budgets we're expecting for the full three years. Uh, the fourth and fifth year are a 3% three cost of living estimate is just a placeholder. But <clears throat> at each and every, at the end of every year, we're going to get together as a board again and uh, discuss what our projected income is with the projected expenses as things change and so at any time we can decide to pull the trigger even after one year or after two years and say let's start up another 218 process now because of this new thing that's happened we're going to have to make a change and uh, that's our safety valve and if we want if if our customers spring back to the 2015 or uh, excuse me to the 2013 or the 2012 water usage and our our uh, variable revenues increase so drastically that we are over collecting then uh, by board decision I believe that we would be able to reduce the rates without going through a 218 process but it's going to be a yearly function of the board's process 
Yearly function. Yearly function. I agree with you on that. I think we should just stick with the three years. We can see that far down maybe. There are so many things that can change in this world. But you can change it so adopting the five-year plan, if they are correct in what we assumed or what the committee assumed, then we don't have to do anything and you're already taken care of for five years. I don't think you're going to be taken care of for three years, uh, five years. I think something's going to happen. Then we'll be able to come back to it as, Bill, as uh, Ken just explained each year and look at it. Well, fine, but I don't think we need to buy into five years when five years is who knows what. Even George was saying he doesn't know. He put 3% cost of living. This year, there's no cost of living increase, period. <coughs> I've always thought the further you plan ahead, the better. That's why I go for the five. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get Especially when you can change a, it. an opinion there and opinions here, but it's something that we can give direction on here in a few minutes. And the last uh, item, bullet point here, is the irrigation local agency rates, uh, residential irrigation, and um, and the actual farms. And uh, before I go back to the public, uh, any comment from the farmers of the group? Well, neither one of us are farmers. We work in agriculture, but what, I've got a few head of sheep, but that's about it. About what? You mean about the irrigation local agency rates? Yeah, um, about the subsidy of them. I don't Is think they're something? being subsidized. <laughs> uh, if you are willing to pay... Okay. More, almost, this, okay, I'll give you a little lecture then, so you, you should brought it up. Corn was selling for $12 a hundred a year ago. It's around $6 to the farmer now. Uh, if you take in cotton is down, hogs are down, <coughs> milk, if you go into the market, is $3 a gallon. It was $4 a year ago. And these, in, and there's a creamery and processors in between that that gets to the dairyman. So I'd say he's got apples up here for sale, and that's his produce. The other ones are selling vegetables. They pretty well hold up, but they're susceptible to the same market conditions. A farmer does not know, it's a crazy business. You don't know what you're gonna get for it when you plant it unless you sell it on a contract and then you better have the yield to fill the contract. So if you get a drought, like in the Midwest, sometimes they can't fill the corn contracts. So there's a variability in it, Ken, and that's why I say three years, oh man, there's no way. that In my world, you can do it. My seed business, some products are way up, some are way down from six months ago. Um, no, it, it just three years is a, to me is about as all you can We're off the years. So, Tell us about the subsidies. So are you, are you comfortable? Wanting, yeah. Why are you wanting to subsidize them? That we're, we're done with the years. We were talking about how because do you feel about their income subsidies? is not assured. They oh, don't oh it's wages. a sympathy subsidy. Is that legal in, two, in the Prop 218? Oh, well, you, my recommendation is to have answer. sound policy reasons for the subsidy. Excuse me? Sound policy reasons for a subsidy. George gave you a number of them. Um, and so I would stick to those. You know, it's Maybe we better bullet point those just one more time for... Well, one is they tend to be your quickest reacting. If, if there is a shortage, a drought, you can turn the valve on them pretty quickly. So they're, you know, you use them in times of plenty because they're filling out your water rights. Remember, we still have two permits. So you want them to use a lot of water at certain time periods. In times of drought, that's a valve that you can manipulate pretty quickly. You, they, can, they can reduce their usage and so that's one reason. Um, I've heard that the open space issue, that that is in a way uh, a benefit to um, low income folks, folks that don't have uh, recreational facilities, you know, at their house they could go to the parks or visit the schools. Uh, you've also heard that you basically have the same tax paying base. You know, if you raise the rates to tax funded entities, you're really just raising the rates to your same clientele and those tax funded entities don't really have a really easy way to, to raise revenue. Um, not that 218 is very easy, but uh, it's easier than than a tax funded entity. So those are some of the reasons. Do you have more that you want to add? Um, the, the irrigation heritage part and the fact that in the past, 
um, the public, our customers actually, there was a survey some years before I got here to see if that irrigation subsidy should continue and the results were overwhelmingly supported by the customers to continue that. So unless the customer attitude has changed significantly in the last 10 or 15 years, um, you are likely to get support from the community to continue that irrigation subsidy. I think you mentioned that in this document too, didn't you? Someplace I read that. I think Maybe. You did, I've rewritten it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. And then the other thing that I think Dustin just mentioned it, but I know I've had discussions with other people, I think we just here for our water rights, if we all of a sudden we stop using a lot of that water, pretty soon they'll take it away. That's, That's a good. One. You know, I mean, they have the ability to do that. Yeah. Because the water doesn't belong to us; it belongs to the state of California. And uh, we just, we really don't even have care, control, and necessity of it. And all you got to do is talk to the big wigs, which I've done in the past. Yeah. Well, I, th I think that the uh, that the agricultural industry in this area, um, you know, should have the lower rates. And uh, the reason that I think that is because after a time, I never used to think that, you know, years ago, I always thought that they should just be treated like any business. They're a business, they're a business. Figure out what your costs are, produce a product, sell it. Um, but uh, when the uh, dam was first built, when the people voted this in there and they, they, they voted to get this water so they could use for their irrigation, uh, by golly, you know, back then, I'm sure that they were fully uh, uh, compensatory rates because they had to pay for it. Uh, but as time went by and then we changed the rules and started filtering the water, uh, the, the, the price of water got real expensive when we didn't have open ditches anymore to transport the water down, the, down to the end user. So I believe that there are plenty of reasons why the agricultural industry should be uh, taken care of as best we can in this matter. And we have the, the uh, the rule basis within 218 to do that um by did you want to well, after you get done i didn't oh. need to interrupt you. oh well i'm about done uh and then i think maybe i was just going to ask a question and since mike is here or george if we if we charged our local agencies that use the water like the school district and the parks and rec people even though they're changing with california uh, and we had it on 10k what would they be paying a month more than they're paying now, approximately? You mean more than they would pay with these reduced rates? Well, on a residential meter monthly service charge, it would be the 36 versus 54 for a small meter. If they have a three inch meter, it'd be 10 times that. What does it cost them to irrigate? And you know, we're a football family. What does it cost them to irrigate the football stadium down there? You have any idea? I have no idea. <laughs> we, never modeled, we never modeled that on Aquahawk. That would be a good thing to do. Well, the school district's on Aquahawk, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I, I don't know that they have Separate gone meters. through, because they would actually have to do the effort to turn the, just sure. the football field on and do the calculation. Yeah. It could be done, but I, I don't know what they've done to do that. I'll tell you an interesting thing that happened to Davis. Davis built a state-of-the-art multi-million dollar football complex and it's got artificial turf in it. It got so hot, I had a big meeting down there this week, it got so hot that they had ambulances lined up to haul the people off and you know what they had to do to the damn thing to play ball on it? They had to install an irrigation system and irrigate it yeah. to cool it off and wash it. Kind of interesting. I, maybe that's what I, I mean, this is a Doug storytelling time, but uh, I was watching a football game and well, I don't watch many of I know, I, but I saw these, these players out on this AstroTurf stuff and, and it looks like they were little trails of dust or something coming up when they had skid or something. And I said, what the hell is going on there? Is that dirt? Did they put dirt and sand down in there to kind of give it a it's better? Recycled tire. Excuse me? Recycled tire. Recycled tires. This was kind of a brownish looking, I, I thought maybe it was water, a trail of water coming up. It's, it's a recycled tire. They, they're because they're peeling they out on them like cancer. in a road. <laughs> they're saying now it may cause cancer. <laughs>
I'm all done telling stories. Okay. Um, then it it uh, it sounds like perhaps we will give you directions soon in regard to irrigation and local agency rates. But uh, right now, I'm going to come go back out to the public. If anybody would like to speak to items uh, that are different than what we spoke about the first time, so we don't just beat the dead horse. Uh, I've been, yes, you will. We'll start with you, John. <laughs> regards to the local agency rates, uh, I agree with 100% uh, for the agriculture, but when we, I didn't realize until Neil brought up what he did about what's included in local agencies, and I've, I've got to give an example on this. When we went into the water shor shortage and driving by some of the park and rides and some of the town sites and seeing the sprinklers kick on and seeing water flooding all over. I called George and I asked, I said, can I see who these high rate users are? And George told me, we can't see it. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a private thing and we can't give out that list. So I did a freedom of information request to the town of Paradise and got a copy of the water meters and water bills that they had. And to give them a break, on a lot of these meters that they have just sitting and some of these meters that in looking at their bills they were using an awful lot of water for little spaces that they had I I don't agree with it I'd like to see the board look at something that if the pe if the public has the ability to put feet on the ground at a park such as parks and rec or somewhere like that that they get the rate but if it's a park and ride or somewhere where the people or the post office where it's not a public park or a public benefit area where people not just look at something that the water is irrigating but can put their feet on the ground they get the rate if if it's if it's somewhere an office building that's a government entity or whatever no and it it may be a hassle for the district to figure out what's what but I think I think it just makes sense uh, if it's an office if it's an office whether it's the post office or an example of a board that I'm gonna have to go before is three core and I'm sure if their office was up here they would be probably fall into that bracket but if they can put feet on the ground and benefit from it they should get the lower rate if they don't they shouldn't and uh, that's just my feeling on it of uh, and you guys decide if it's an easy way to do it or not thank you John what do you mean by feet on the ground public the public access to So a cemetery would be feet under the ground? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I the cemetery. You're, you're improving, Hus. You are improving. I'm having an effect on you. <laughs> you must you can't be. Raise the rate on that. <laughs> <laughs> they <still> <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. Any uh, any Don't other they do it in Chicago? Don't dead, dead people vote in Chicago? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, any other public comments about our items here? Yes, Neil. I'll speak to a couple of different issues than I spoke about before, and maybe I can squeeze in some discussion of what I talked about before to redirect. Um, Mr. Amalia expressed uh, concern about multifamily. And actually, in my analysis of some of the accounts that are in the district, certainly some of them would experience increases in uh, charges under the new rate system, but many will not. Many will experience substantial savings. And I think what's going to distinguish between the, the group of savers and the group that's not going to save are the, whether their meters are really right-sized or not. Looking at that issue, I don't know if, if George or Kevin would care to jump in on, on that one, but. That's what I've seen looking at, at multifamily and seeing some of them go up quite a bit, but they have some pretty big meters for not very many units versus some that, that um, actually have quite a few units with one large meter. But when you look at the EDUs 
compared to the meter size, it's, it's pretty aggressive. So I think that actually multifamily will probably see a rash of meter right sizing at certain locations, and then they'll probably experience some substantial savings. But I think that's probably because in a, in a way our multifamily rate structure used to somewhat disadvantage them compared to like a, a business rate, which they are moving to. Uh, the business rate is what local agencies are currently on. Uh, because the business rate is available to businesses, the fact that we have local agencies which aren't really local agencies probably is not a discriminatory thing. I mean, they could be a business, they'd still be paying the same rate. But if, if we have this local agency rate, which is now subsidized, the fact that some of these local agencies are corporations and that they maintain facilities that are not available for people to put their boots on the ground and enjoy themselves, I think it's hard to use some of the, the arguments for subsidizing them that have been presented in the, in the rate study. Uh, also, based on the list of local agencies that we have right now, I think that if we see a much more favorable rate offered to these people than what they have currently enjoyed, we're gonna see an expansion of that list. And so other nonprofit corporations or groups like churches and perhaps uh, organizations of, of uh, elks and eagles and, and so forth might also be able to uh, take advantage of that. And, and uh, I guess the question is, you know, how much do we want to see that expanded and does it mean that it should be subsidized? Um, we also have a recreation rate that's on this same list. Now, most of the recreation rate customers are public agencies. It's primarily the rec district, but we also have a privately owned golf course in that list. This is not a place where anybody can just go and recreate for free. This is a place that's for profit and you have to pay to go there to knock golf balls around or throw discs. Um, do we need to subsidize that? Um, returning to irrigation, uh, I believe personally that it should be subsidized. Now, what my personal beliefs are on that subject are necessarily what we're talking about here, but I guess for any subsidy for irrigation, I would ask, what's the basis for that? And I think there was some misunderstanding in the presentation that I was trying to, or the idea that I was trying to say that, uh, that I believe that that should be based on a calculation of what the difference is in cost. I don't mean that in terms of what's the incremental cost to treat another unit of water, but for, for people who are not required to be served treated water, the entire cost of treatment should be removed from their bill. That would include the six staff that are paid for for all the rest of us who need treated water, but they wouldn't be needed for serving raw water. That the cost of debt service, which I believe is a fairly substantial line item in our, our current budget, is one of the things that could conceivably be struck. If, if it's for the treatment plant, uh, we're going to take on additional debt that is gonna be a significant increase in the 2018 budget. Well, that's only gonna to be to treat water. If we're gonna be offering a subsidy to the irrigation customers, I would say that that entire line item would be removed from the calculation of their cost. So that's just by way of clarification of what I meant by looking at a, at a cost of service for irrigation. Um, so I believe that's all I had to offer, and I thank you. That was just about perfect, Neil. Thank you. <laughs> what? Do, do we have a definition of local agency? <clears throat> sounds, well, like we're, sounds like we're going to make one. Well, I, we're going to have one. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you that um, if this were to go forward, Neil's correct. Right now, it was local agency's current designation and probably what's in the calculation was um, pretty loose because it was the same as business. Right. Um, if this was to proceed, we would be looking a lot closer. So I'm not sure what corporations he's talking about. Um, the golf course is an outdoor recreation, which is highlighted as different. I've categorized them together because they're basically covered in irrigation and local agency. Um, that's something this board approved some years ago, a switch to the outdoor recreation rate, and, and the golf course was able to <coughs> fit from that. And they're currently getting a discount. And they are getting a discount now. So if the board wants to further define what, who would fall in this, that's fine. 
yes, we can do a survey pretty easily and see which meters go to parks, which meters goes to the, the schools, uh, which go to park and ride, and if you want to divvy them up, that's not a, that, that's plenty doable. We've got 75 to review, we can pare them down, not a, not a difficult On task. A name by name basis. I can tell you the, the main, because I, I, I was the one that looked at this a lot, the main subsidies are going to the school district, parks and rec, cemetery district, and the irrigation customers. That's where the main subsidies are going. The other ones are not eating that. If they are eating any of it up, they're not eating a lot of it up. But that's where you're looking at the ones that have vast amount of space, grass, grass to irrigate. Water usage. Yeah. It would have killed the school district. The school district would have had a, a enormous amount of increase because of the watering their grasses. They would have seen a huge increase because of the watering of the grasses. Irrigation would have seen a huge increase because of the watering of their crops. So that's where the main subsidy was was drawn from. There's a lot of there. Obviously, there's a lot of people in those 75 of them, but that's where the chunk main chunk of those were. It wasn't what the parks and yeah. ride yeah. park and ride wasn't. If you look at one. the post office, post office wasn't a big one. They're already going to get the service charge at 3K. So they're not hurting. So, the, they're not hurting the budget yeah. too much in that. It's not going to make a significant change. Did we figure out how much water for this ice skating rink? <laughs> <laughs> Good use of water. <laughs> right. Okay. Any other um, public comments? It's not public since Larry was commenting. Um, the golf course is a customer of mine. I sell them a little bit of seed each year. But th this is a husband and wife thing. They're retired. They live in their home next to the, to the thing. And they are very frugal. And I'm sure their water consumption is very low now. And I think whatever way you can keep them in business, they're the only yeah. golf course left. So those that like to play golf up here, other than going down and bouncing them off the rocks down below. So. Uh, Del Oro couldn't. Uh couldn't afford to pay their own water bill <laughs> up there in the plains. Uh, okay, any other public comments? Okay, there being none, then we'll bring it back to the board and, and uh, perhaps we can decide on giving direction to George. It sounds like maybe we need to have uh, more discussion about uh, the local agency thing and, and uh, you know, I, I don't know what's right or wrong. Can I, uh, can I have a clear thing? Okay. Tonight was about giving direction. So I don't want it to get to a point where we're deciding who's in and out tonight. Right. Yeah, I, um, yeah, exactly. I, I hear what's going on. As, as far as the report, which is what I need input on, I will add text that demonstrates that this is the biggest financial um, impact or subsidy and then it can be further refined through board action on yeah. definitions of who qualifies and who doesn't then the report can move forward and you can agendize and deal with the exactly. definition of local agency irrigation all this at a subsequent meeting realizing today is thursday late thursday uh when would we have that before tuesday <coughs> Tuesday meeting is just two days from now, basically. Well, I, unless Dustin corrects me, we can make that decision in January or we can make that decision in... You mean defining local agency? Yeah. I, Doug's asking when When are you going to have the yeah. cost of service What's revision? The cost of service revision is going to be for Tuesday. When so you're going to get it probably Monday. Yeah, you get it Monday. Okay. Yep. And just so you know, the board will get... Um, a copy that shows the track changes, but in the packet will be the final document. Okay. Well, I would suggest we move forward with the irrigation local agency rates that are proposed right now, and then later on we can go back and redefine. Who fits in there? Who fits into that category like we have redefined in the, in the past. I, I think, structures. I, I kind of like that, and I, I think George, when we get around to getting George. Yeah, you know, the definition of new local agencies should be defined. Is. Have you defined it in the cost of We'll wait till our, our attorney stops. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Destin would like me to propose a further definition for you to consider Tuesday. For using what? For local agency for local definition. Agency. Okay, so good. that we're sending them the appropriate Prop 218 notice to each account. Okay. <clears throat> so. um, okay, and I think we're gonna need to, if you can provide us with information about who that impacts. We're talking 70 people. I, I didn't think it would be that high. 75. Um, meters, 75 meters. 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 75. Yeah, 75 entities. Meters. So Parks Good. and Rec have, I don't know how many, many meters. meters you guys so that's a lot. Oh, yeah. Mike's kind of wasteful that way. He's got and a lot. And the school yeah, district has a lot has of meters. meters. <laughs> so those okay, are so provide us more, more definition of that. Um, I have a question about the agenda. For, can we still add items to the agenda? It's so close. Yeah, yeah, it's a special meeting. Yeah. Special meeting. So it's a 24 hour notice. Deadline for adding to the agenda. Um, Friday. <laughs> Probably Friday because we got to put together Monday. Uh, Friday noon. Okay. Um, yeah. Because that this is, is our... a regular meeting. That's a special meeting for Ken can go dance again, right? Yes. Correct. <laughs> okay. Right. It keeps me in the tutu. Yes. Well, that'd be interesting, but I don't think I'm going. <laughs> you should come see Bill. <laughs> okay. Do they have? Do you have direction on all four items? Then? No. Because I want to. I want to make sure that we've given them direction okay. on the uh, irrigation local agency. Um, we, um, and it sounds like we've all we're going with the the hearing date of this process, the timeline up to January 29th from the board. Uh, so identify that number, and if we have to change it on next Tuesday, then we will. And in regard to reserving, we're all in agreement that we should have a reserving policy, and and uh, what we have on paper is fine. And if uh, if board members want to propose for any adjustments in that, I know that I will say this right now because I'll bring it up next Tuesday. Uh, I was not really happy that. Um, we have this the target of expenses of $8.2 million, I think it was. And if you look at the target of income, if we put everybody <laughs> what we think, where we think they're going to be, uh, we didn't get $8.2 million. It was uh, 7.8 or 7.9 or something like that. It's three, four hundred thousand dollars off. So. Or the bottom line is we may not be able to fund that $600,000 in the first year. Uh, but the, the, the reason for it, and I'll let George maybe give his own reason. This is George's reason, but the reason for it is because we really don't know what uh, the usage is going to go back to. Looks like we're going to have an El Nino wet year and people may spring back. We don't expect they'll ever uh, or spring back to the usage they had in 2012 and 2013. So the income won't be at that level. So we're trying to make the best of just uh, guesses. And, uh, but after we have then a year under our belt and see what people, what plans they've chosen, how much their usage is now, um, and, and then we'll have a, a more finite understanding of the income that's coming in. So we may not get to reserve the full 600,000 the first year. I wanted to increase the rate more now on the fixed portion to make sure we got that $600,000 hit into our, into our reserving categories right away because we're already at the bottom of the barrel. Um, so we may leave it at that, we may not, we, we may change it, but that uh, was my comment on the on the reserving. Did you want to say anything else, or did I mess it up for you? Or? No, you covered. Although um, there's also the outside revenue um, that's highlighted in the local agency. Whatever's left there is, or that total amount's not shown in that calculation. So that. $266,000 of income would be added to the $7.8 million of expected revenue. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yes. So there's, okay, good. Closer to three, well, so does that bring that our number to break, break even, even or bring it it's to? really close If we decided to, to put that on the reserve, would it automatically be put in there if we wanted it that way? All right. Well, 600 will um, go in the reserve if it's there. Yeah, the, the official. Say if, it is, say, say if the reserve comes up Four hundred thousand, and we had two hundred, uh, two or three hundred thousand left over from this 
outside income you're talking about. Could we decide to put yes. 200,000 out of that into the reserve? Yes, you can. Okay. Our current, so, our current board direction that goes into the budget is we use those monies for minor capital projects. That's what we've done historically. But going forward, in every budget year, you have the opportunity to decide what you want to do with that. And at the end of each, process-wise, at, the, at our, the end of our fiscal year, when we're counting our, our shekels, uh, if we have um, $800,000 cushion left over there, is there any problem in reserving the full 800000 oh, no. Nope. Okay. This takes board action. So anyhow, this, that, that board action and this and, total uh, expenditures number though does not take into consideration the six hundred thousand, or does it? It does. It does. It does, it does have it in there. Yeah. Because it kind of was in four point four, but four point four below. It takes it into consideration, but okay. on the total revenue, it doesn't take into consideration the additional other revenues that we collect. Then I'm okay. That's what I thought I'd understand, but then when Ken just reiterated it, I thought, no, wait a second. No, it's in there. No. Okay. okay. Say, and how'd your, um, how'd your Lotus program wind up with that? So. Three, three, four, five year rate plan. Are we going to ask George to put it down as three years or five years? Did we already you know, decide George, on five? Or uh, Bill would had, like three. We I mean, already had board concurrence on five. Well, I'm, I'm just going to, we did, but I just want to make we'll sure we may have changed our mind. Still at what, five. I, what I would like to have. I'm still at five because we can make a change anytime. Yeah. Okay. We've basically got a three year plan right now, and we're going to be, if you look at the figures here 18 will be the first time when we have our new loan this oh, type of a thing what does it cost us to do this 218 i always thought it was very prohibitive because nobody ever wanted to go do that and I, this is my first time, time. Well, yeah. so what's it going to cost us i can tell you this time it cost me hundreds of hours two to three hundred and it cost kevin many many and we're spending a lot of legal time but once we've gone through this first one, it gets cheaper and cheaper because we're using the same formulas, printing, distributing, say 20 grand or less, um, a little for legal to re-review everything, and then we're done. Okay. So I would just want to point out, Grant, if we okay. didn't have an, an engineer in George, certified engineer, and a, a CPA, Treasurer, it probably would have cost us outside over a hundred thousand dollars just to get to this. Just, just to, to get, get to tonight. Just to get, to tonight. get the rate yeah. steady. You would have brought somebody else in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it would have caught. Just been, to would, get to tonight. Yeah. 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 He, he's on. Well, that's what I'm hoping that we can market. get some kind of an estimate of, it of says what it's cost. Thirty thousand. The replays. Thirty thousand. Maybe twenty, thirty thousand. Yeah. Some updates and you can tell the, George, oh, the newest the cabinet's right under there. The staff, <coughs> staff had something to do with this. Neil's and other people had a lot of input put in this thing. This is quite a well put together document. It really is. And it covers a lot of area and a lot of considerations. So it's well done. I, Thank as far you. as I'm concerned, it's very well done. Plus, a lot of time was spent over Thanksgiving when they were supposed to be on vacation, <laughs> on holiday leave. Well, I hope they had a lot of this done before Thanksgiving, because nope. uh -huh. Thanksgiving was just a few days ago. <laughs> now, they don't procrastinate a right up to the end to do something. Oh, you know, they, they how start how this many hours did September you work on it on Thanksgiving? Yeah, 60, last minute changes. 60 days before Thanksgiving, Director Duncan. And we gave, they don't procrastinate on this thing. They get right at it, don't you, George? No, but we, we had a lot of last minute changes after conversations with legal. Legal, so there, was, was, there, was, there was some work. Done. Prop 218 is a real okay. I, I can of words. Sounds to me, George, like we've given you direction on those four topics. I think so. Are you in concurrence with that? Yes. Do I have one more comment? Certainly. On oh, this document that you handed out here, and you know, this is my first time going through a Prop 218. So I'm learning every day on this. Uh, and right on the first page here that you have, how to protest the proposed rates, and it talks about here under Pro 18, and the property owners can protest on this. What do we do? We have to take any protests that come in and look at them and document that such and such a person, 
protested it, right? They're going to protest on a form. So on as you see in here, it tells them how to do it. There'll be a form online. There'll be a form available here at the office. Yep. They fill it out. Here. That's good. And we collect them. And we, then we count them. The one thing that you got to remember, though, is <clears throat> you can only protest one protest per property. Property, yeah. So if you've got 100 tenants and they all protest, only one counts. Yeah, but there's only one o owner. But maybe not down here on plantation, so we'll have to talk about that, Barry. Yeah, yeah. You already <laughs> have. I figured you had. What do you have, about 300? I don't want <laughs> How many from the cemetery? <laughs> Is there any other full board input on this? <laughs> I know it's last minute, but... Now we're going to have some of this updated stuff that we're talking about to look at at least by Monday, right? Sure. Correct. Okay. Will that be... Would we be able to stop by and pick up hard copies or get it off the George, and we'll let you know when they're available. Okay. Just, George, just uh, in the Dales, get us a legend. A legend. You need a definition. the legend. One unit equals seven hundred forty-eight. <laughs> and uh, and that one unit, uh, you know, how, how many uh, uh, how many units in a in a acre in an acre foot of water? Just just kind of get several different things so that it'll it'll help somebody who's whether they're real curious or just slightly curious. Uh, determine what that means because some yeah, places we yeah. talk about acre you feet. Miners inches like they do over in Oregon. Miners inches? Miners inches. We don't <laughs> measure that. <laughs> I don't know how many miners are up here. <laughs> Used to be a lot. Used to be a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to thank you very much with that topic and we're going to move on to director's comments. Drop rates. Okay. Uh, director's comments. Uh, Doug, would you like to start off this time? Um, uh, I'd be happy to start off this time. Describe As I mentioned time. before, I thought this you was a right well put together document, whether you agree or rate disagree train, with it. Rate change, and then you start uh, talking about optional plans. We're going through a very business like portion, and like I'll tell you people here. in the public and even staff, but we're depending on your input to let us know what you think. You know, so um, we need to have that. And you got 45 days apparently. Well, you better not procrastinate. You better make it first year under the 30 day days. Plan, to tell us what. That's so yeah. Either on this forum that you're going to have or my phone or whoever. Says a word well, to count as a, as a legitimate protest has to be on a form. Huh. Can't be verbal, can't be email. No, no, it has to be handed in, I suppose. Or mail, I suppose it could be mail. Handed in or mail. You can just call Doug at home too and then he'll, he'll take your tally right there, yep. so. Andy, <laughs> oh, you sent it to. Bill, would you like your comment? No, you I forwarded it to him. Yeah. Um, oh, I just want to thank all version. the employees that have come oh, tonight but, and especially Niels for standing up and talking about what his concerns were with uh, different section. things we were debating about. And thanking uh, uh, good old Rusty there with the Park and Recreation District. He's a great guy. And uh, thanks for him showing up and expressing his concerns. Because that's how we get to get things worked out. It, it, it takes a long time, and I'm not a very patient man at these meetings, and it goes on and on and on. But ever since I was president one year, and I put, made them all stop talking and everything else, they haven't wanted me. So at any rate, have a great weekend guys and I hope George and Kevin have a good weekend working at PID's office to get all this stuff together. Seth, comments for you? Yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, the financial committee and uh, Dustin and staff for all their hard work on this. I know it's been a long ongoing process. Um, I know certain board members were just hoping it would happen eight months ago, but this is how long it takes to get to this point. So. Um, I'm looking forward to it to go into Prop 218 and doing our responses. So, thank you for all your hard work. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I think you got that right. Talking. Are we? I wasn't necessarily. I was talking committee? about. No, I think I was talking about. Too. I was talking about the Larry half of the committee. But oh, you know, okay. <laughs> you can jump in there too. <laughs> yeah, there's two. We're on the finance committee and the ad hoc. Yeah, committee. so he got it right. But it was yeah. the ad hoc committee. Yeah, the ad hoc. Yeah, committee. yeah. <laughs> right. Great committee. Okay. Larry, comments for you? I just I want to reiterate the, what Bill said that I really appreciate the comments, especially from Neil 
John, I don't know about. <laughs> but I do appre I appreciate anybody who gives us information that makes our de decisions more applicable to what's happening. So thank you all. Thank you. Uh, my comments are, are brief. It's, uh, it's things like this that we're producing in our, in our new way of handling things with a community relations team. Um, makes it simpler to understand. You got some little graphics, you got some arrows, you got some cartoons. Uh, the water talk came out today. I read through that uh, brief and to the point. And things like these rate increases, yeah, they're distasteful for people. Uh, you know, everybody, nobody likes rate increases. I don't, uh, whether it's at the gas pump or at the store. Um, the water company, it happens there too. But uh, the better that we can communicate with why we're doing things, where the numbers are, what we're doing in this particular case where we're, we're looking to subsidize farm, uh, farm agricultural industry, why uh, those things are all important to making the individual people who end up paying all of these uh, millions of dollars a year in fees and, and water rates uh, comfortable that they're paying the right amount. And, uh, you know, we can talk about uh, uh, cost control. We can talk about further slashing into the expenses that we have. But there will, there, there's really very little area where we can go in and slash expenses without slashing service. And that's a, a decision, too. We may be in a situation where like the town has done in years past, where we decide we're only gonna be open for customer service two and a half days a week. We're only gonna be, we're gonna cut down on, our, on our, our field units. We aren't going to be replacing pipe ourselves. We'll just pay for it by contractors when we can. Uh, and we can, we can cut back. We can cut back to the bone on those, uh, but it, it goes along with a corresponding reduction in service and there's just no two ways about that. So, but it's something that should be considered at all times. And that's the end of my comments. So I'll take a motion to adjourn this meeting. We don't need a motion. So move. Well, I read something that Did said... Did we do that too? I read it just recently, and uh, that's why I asked for it. I'll make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. <laughs> I've already made that motion. And I'll second it. For the lack of a second. Oh, nobody... <laughs> We're adjourned. Uh, we have Thank to stay you. here because nobody's seconded. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what the funny